Hey, Thomas Bartke here. Time for an updated video on the Trackify Custom Audience Builder. Uh, that's what this means here. CA Builder stands for Custom Audience Builder. And you can use this to build many, many, many custom audiences all at the same time. These custom audiences are built in Facebook and they're using criteria as filters that um, are derived from the event data that Trackify adds to your Facebook Pixel events. Okay, so just in case you don't know how to get there in Trackify, you go to Facebook Tools, click on Audience Manager. That takes you to the first tab here to the audience list. And then the second tab over is the Custom Audience Builder. If you don't have any audience in your Facebook account just yet, you will get this message right here. You can click this off or just, um, you know, it'll it's self-explanatory, self-understandable self-understood. So let's just jump in here. So we have, of course, here's a name that you can uh, give your custom audience. So you want to name it. Um, so let's just call this test for, for now. And then here is the first switch. So this is called the custom audience builder switch. And you can uh, distinguish here between the basic way that you're building this filter. You want to either base it on events or you want to base it on URL. So let's first cover the URL base. Uh, criteria. This is really simple. On the URL-based criteria, you should not select any of the event types here at all. And the only uh, parameter that you have available here is the URL. So if you want to build URL-based custom audience, I should say, you can simply go in here and any any website that is uh, where your Facebook pixel that is installed with Trackify is firing, uh, you can just simply take any part of the URL. So for example, if you want to build one based on just this product here, you could just uh, take the URL slug that is for the, for this product and just copy it and paste it in here. Now, this value here, there's, there are a couple of different options. Typically, for any of the parameters that are kind of like strings where you know several values might be put together or it kind of looks like words, um, it's usually best to set this to contains as opposed to equal or 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 not equal or any of the other things there. We'll go over some of the uh, criteria that have kind of exceptions, but typically it's better to use contains here rather than equals. And that explains that uh, applies to many other places where you use similar uh, filter setups, like in the custom conversions that you can set up on Facebook and in the custom audiences that you can set up on Facebook or you can set them up here. So this would be all there is to do on a URL-based custom audience. Now you can click one or multiple lookback periods, and that means it will include people who match this event data here, this event criteria, uh, for the past so many days. Okay, so if you click seven, it, you're going to filter out everybody who um, visited this URL within the past seven days. If you, in addition to that, click 30, now it's going to create two custom audiences for you. One of the visitors that visited this URL in the last seven days, and then another one that visited this URL in the last 30 days. Now, remember, I said not to use any of the event types when you're using URL-based criteria, okay? So basically, event-based and URL-based are opposites and if you try mixing them you get undesirable results okay so this here would now create two audiences of visitors uh, to this URL okay and that's a that's it that's all there is to it then you, you click create and it'll create the audiences and it'll jump back to the audience list and it'll pull up these two audiences in um, in this audience right here and they're they're pulled in from Facebook so uh, that's where they come from. All right, so let's move on to the next to the next piece. That would be the an event-based uh, custom audience. And on event-based custom audiences, you now have a bunch of different options here available. There are three that are kind of pre-selected. Uh, they are event content IDs, event content name, and event content time data. So let's take a quick look where these come from. All right, so right here, is the event, um, a view content event. The values that we have there are content IDs, content time data, and content name, all right? So that's what you have here that you can select, content IDs, content name, and content time data. And then you can also add a custom parameter 
and um, that uh, I'm going to explain that as well. So let's go to one at a time here and start with content IDs. Content IDs is mainly used to build uh, product specific audiences and to get those, to get the content IDs, uh, the easiest way to find them is actually to go into your Shopify admin and you go to a specific product. So let's just say, which product did I have here just now? This one. So you go to that product in your admin and then right here, the first number uh, or the last number in the URL on the product page in your Shopify admin, that is the product ID for that product. And that is um, the ID that you can use to build an audience for that particular product. You just put it in like this, copy and paste it in here like this. Remember to keep this as contains, uh, because if you don't, uh, if you don't, you you might be missing out some events. For example, when this uh, product is combined with other products in the cart or in the purchase, then uh, choosing equal here doesn't get doesn't catch all of the transactions. So just always keep that at contains and you'll most likely get uh, the desired, desired results, okay? You can also put multiple products in here that would build audiences uh, for multiple products together. Uh, that's another option, so you can do that as well. So if you wanna just go to another product here. So let's just say you want to also include this product in the audiences, you just copy this product ID and put it in here. And so these, the values that are in here in this field always act as or relationship to each other, right? So this would now be an audience that has, uh, that is related to either one of these two products, okay? So both the visitors uh, to this product and to this product would be included in this audience, all right? So now, in the event-based uh, custom audiences, you also want to select at least one event type so that these um, these values here that you select here relate to the specific event type. And you can select multiple events here at the same time. And what that does is it will build a separate audience for each event type that you've selected. So this setting right here would now build three audiences, one for each event type, each one would have this filter criteria. So it would include view contents for these two products that I've entered in here. And then the second one would include add to cards for these two products. And the third one would, would include all purchase events for these two products. Now, we still have to select at least one look back period here so that um, that value can also be set in those audiences that we're generating. And that works exactly the same way as I explained in the beginning of the video. So if you click seven, then the seven day um, time frame will apply to each of these three audiences. If you select 30 in addition to seven, then it will create three more audiences. Okay, so this is where the leverage and the, of this bulk um, custom audience builder comes in that when you select multiple of these values, it creates that many more audiences and um, all in one fell swoop with this click of the create button here. Whereas if you were to create them in Facebook, you would have to go through every single one of these audiences and, and build them there. All right. So there you go. That's the setting for content IDs. Now, Let's go back and pick the next value here. Content in niche, that is where your RR track tags come in. You can see here in this um, in this example call, all of the RR track tags that are assigned to this product. Now, this is obviously doesn't make any sense, but uh, this is just from the test store. This product happens to have a bunch of tracking tags assigned to it. So you can use any of these track tags here. Um, any of the track tags that are assigned to the product can be used to filter that out. You can see here, there's a whole bunch of track tags assigned to that. Yeah, that's because we were experimenting some stuff. Okay, so you can just copy that value and put it in like this. And again, keep that at contains and set this to content name. And you can also, um, you know, do that simplify that by even just typing teacher and well you should spell it right so get the right values uh right results okay so there that would essentially filter the same thing 
Um, and of course, it depends on kind of how you set up the structure of your R track tags, um, if that would exactly give you exactly the desired result. Now, this one does not pull in any products that just have the tag teacher on them, okay? The Trackify only fires the designated tracking tags into the uh, into the uh, events that it generates, into the pixel events, right? So we have added recently the, um, the PP tag, so any tag that starts with PP underscore is included in the content name uh, value, and also any tag that starts with RR underscore track underscore these tags are also included. So, but not, none of the just like standard tags, if you just tag your product teacher, those tags are not in, included in the uh, event data and therefore it wouldn't work to filter products that just have a teacher tag with this here. But you can uh, kind of take a little shortcut and filter all RR track teacher and all PP teacher uh, tags all together with this one criteria. And of course, you can also add to that. So if you want to um, filter teachers and students, and you have two tags that correspond to that, tracking tags that correspond to that, this audience would now build for these combined tags together of teacher and student together. All right, great. Now, let's move on to the next um, um, a parameter value here. That is content time data. So content time data is designed to create custom audiences for specific time frames uh, that happen in your store. So for example, if you go through your Google Analytics report or Facebook Analytics report, and you find that your best results in your Shopify store always happen on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evening or afternoon between 2 and 6 p.m., let's just say, you could then go in and build a custom audience just for Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, for example. And how would you do that? Well, it's very simple and very intuitive. You just look at this content time data time format here, and you can see the day of the week is in here. Uh, the actual date is in here, so you can filter by month, you can filter by day of the month, you can filter by year, you can fit it, filter by weekday, and you can also filter by the hour. Now, this here is the store hour uh, as in the time zone of the Shopify store, okay? So you don't get confused with that. It's not the visitor's uh, time zone, it's actually the store's time zone, the Shopify store time zone, okay? So, so let's just say we want to build um, an audience just for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We would simply do it this way, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that would now build an audience for everybody who has uh, triggered events on these three weekdays only. And again, the event type is selected by whatever you select here. And for each event type that's selected, it builds one audience uh, that matches the criteria that you set over here, right? You can also do this with, um, with um, you know, the hour. Let's say you want to build um, our uh, you would do that like this, hour 11, uh, hour 12, and hour 13. This works with military time, so it just kind of counts through the hours of the day. Um, this would build uh, a lookalike audience of all hourly visitors between uh, 11 and 1 in the store time, 1 p.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m. in the store time. And this would not have any kind of restriction to days of the week in this case, right? So it would just build uh, audiences out of these specific uh, time frames right here. All right, so there you go. So all of these audiences, when you build them, give you more leverage to build more lookalike audiences that are based on them. And when you build different lookalike audiences, even if they're based on relatively similar custom audience data, they often kind of perform, end up performing differently. And you'll be surprised about the leverage that you can get in scaling your campaigns when you use that, when you try that. All right, now what else can you do? What is this custom parameter thing for? Custom parameter just simply renders this field this name field here, or, or um, variable name field, empty, and that means you can now just type something here. So, for example, let's say we use the value field for this, 
And if the value field, now you can use, this is nice because the value field actually is a number. It's a numerical value that is transmitted in this field. So now it makes sense to either call that equal or better yet, call it less than or greater than or greater than or equal. So that's a good, um, a good criteria here for value. For example, if you want to build purchase events that are, or a purchase audience of everyone who has made a purchase greater than $30, you could do it this way, right? So this now would build a purchase audience of everyone who has had a purchase of more than $30 in the last seven days, and then another one um, that matches this criteria in the last 30 days. Okay, great. You can also do this for any other parameter that you might that might come to the top of your head and that you can filter out and you can see in the values here. So for example, we don't have a separate um, dropdown for this, but here it says content category, right? Content category. So the content category value um, can be entered here manually, right? So when you choose a custom parameter, you have a blank field here. So you can do a content underscore category. Now that is that. And now you could just go, all right, well, I want to make that audience for all tank tops. Now this value is taken from the Shopify setting for uh, product type. You see here, um, let's go back to that other product that we're looking at in this um, captured data. That's one of these here. You can see it says product type tank top. So that is the value that is transmitted into the value of content category. Okay, so you can grab that from there as well. And that's all there is to it. So this is a very cool tool. I hope uh, you know you use it. Um, um, there is not much more here for that. It's mainly a bulk custom audience builder. And I, I hope you make good use of that. Let us know if you have any questions about that. There's much more help available in uh, the help section here about audiences, about all the other features. You can uh, you know, go here and search that. You can search this area. For example, if you wanted to find out more information about audiences, you can just type in audiences here. If you type it right, then uh, search for it. And you get a whole bunch of search results that are specifically um, uh, giving you more information about different um, information about audiences, audience builders, audience situation, what's going on on Facebook, and so forth. All right, so I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. This is Thomas Bartke signing off.